For a century ago, St. Louis, America, and the world were battling the Spanish flu, which killed tens of millions worldwide. That pandemic had second and third waves that proved deadly. Could that happen this time around? As News 4 investigator Lauren Traeger explains, local officials are looking to the past to get a better idea about the future. Long before the arch rose up by the river, but not long after the art museum grew from Forest Park, a pandemic plagued St. Louis. As often as said, you know, history tends to repeat itself. Michael Venzo of the Missouri Historical Society has been studying the influenza pandemic of 1918 for nearly five years. It was very fatal. 50 million people died globally from what's been called the Spanish flu, but Venzo says it actually started much closer to home. A lot of work by um, some uh, great scholars have pinpointed that it originated actually in Kansas, in a small uh, rural county in Kansas, as early as January of 1918. Cases may have been in St. Louis in the spring of 18. So in the same way today, it's kind of hard to tell um, who who really has it, right? It, we, this whole emphasis on testing and trying to understand, well, they didn't have tests. But it was in the fall, as the First World War waged overseas, that the fatal flu took off here. It was a soldier at Jefferson Barracks was the first one in the St. Louis area that was the first reported case and the first reported death. Life, of course, was much different back then. In 1918, there's no internet, there's no KMOV. And they didn't know a lot about disease. Pamphlets encouraged people to sleep with your windows open, gargle salt water, even eat onions to fight the flu. But thankfully, St. Louis had a healer at the helm, head of the health department, Dr. Max Starkloff. He keenly watched places like Philadelphia. In the midst of an outbreak, they marched ahead with a wartime parade. And as soon as they did that, tens of thousands of people gathered in close proximity. And then days later, people got sick and the deaths skyrocketed. So Dr. Starkloff immediately implemented what we now know as social distancing, closing St. Louis's schools, movie theaters, saloons, and churches. And of course, there was an outcry about doing that. And then people kind of got on board. Uh, and started to do it. But what St. Louis did is we flattened the curves. They didn't use the exact language, but it was the same principle. Other cities eventually followed St. Louis's lead. Many people even wore masks. But these graphics from the National Geographic suggest it was too late. Philly, San Francisco, and New York experienced steep curves, deaths in the tens of thousands. But St. Louis's curve takes a much different shape. Starkloff had tried implementing even stricter measures, but business leaders pushed back and then the war ended. And so people kind of got out of their homes and wanted to celebrate and, and commemorate what was happening. Uh, and so some people were kind of breaking those rules a little bit, but the peak went right there, went back up even higher than it had before. Restrictions lifted in mid-November, then were imposed again two weeks later. But by mid-December, cases in St. Louis hit their highest peak, 60 deaths in one day. Easing social distancing too soon, scholars say, created a more significant second wave in St. Louis than in other parts of the country. So what's that mean for St. Louis now? Will history repeat itself? It is possible. It, you know, it, it, it's an unpredictable disease. Both the diseases are different, the way that they're, they're moving them among people are different, and uh, all of our situations are very different. But I think the big lesson um, is that there's a great body of evidence that suggests that the social distancing works. <laughs> Only time will tell. Eventually, in 1919, life for St. Louisans returned to relative normal. Fast forward 100 years later. History tells us there's some hope. Yes, absolutely. There's, there's always hope. Venso says about 2,800 people died from the flu in St. Louis, but the population in the city back then was about double what it is now. Still, you could certainly say a lot of the lessons learned back then are certainly still being applied to our situation now. I'm Lauren Traeger, News 4.